As many of us know, Venus flytraps can be difficult to keep. You can spend a lot of time wondering if your flytraps are dying, if they're dormant, if they're thriving, or if they're even just doing well. Let's look at the Venus flytraps I keep here throughout a season and see what the different looks are. I live in South Carolina, only about four hours drive to Wilmington, North Carolina, where Venus flytraps originate. It rarely freezes here, but I put this makeshift greenhouse over my plants to keep them from freezing and to keep all the leaves, pine needles, and other debris out over the winter. Let's take a look inside and see what the plants look like just after winter. This is February 20th. These plants are all still basically in winter dormancy. Not growing, just sitting idle and waiting for longer, hotter days. We see a lot of dead flytrap leaves and browning of leaves and traps. The koi are just waking up from winter too. Bobby the cat likes coming in and checking things out with me. I also keep a few types of pitcher plants. These out here are all weather and basically dormant too. I keep the Nepenthes pitchers inside over the winter and hang grow lights over them. This does help them get through the winter. When the lows at night are 50 or higher, I'll move them back outside. I also drop a few small fish pellets into the pitchers every few weeks to feed them and mist them often and clip out any dead material so the living leaves can get all the light possible in here. Back outside, these are baby flytraps from seeds last summer, so they're eight months old now. A few more just coming up. The moss does really well in here over winter and a few other freeloading plants. This strange grass just popped up over winter from the peat I put in these baskets. I think it may be this grass I found at a local greenhouse. If you know the name of it, comment below. I'm not familiar with it. I clip it out and pull out the other freeloaders that have set up shop in here. So that's a look at these plants in February here in South Carolina. Now we're at mid-April. The grassy invaders are still growing up high so I keep trimming them and pulling them out. The pitcher plants are already feeling the tug of spring and are sending up their unique flower blooms. And some of the Venus flytraps are too. The traps themselves are looking larger, fuller, and healthier. Some are even catching food already. Here's another look at the seedlings from last year. They're all growing and looking hungry. The makeshift greenhouse has been abused by the March winds, but is still doing its job of keeping the spring debris out. As the days get warmer, I start adding reverse osmosis water or distilled water to the tubs so the plants don't dry out from the spring heat. New fly traps are popping up everywhere. This tells me the plants have survived the winter well and they're healthy. Hopefully you're seeing this with your fly traps too in spring. This time of year the koi pond tends to go green for a week or two because of all the pollen and other debris falling from the trees above. And the biological filtration is still dormant from winter. So I scoop out the debris daily. And I pick out any debris that makes it onto the fly trap trays. Letting the stuff stay in here and decompose will just add fertilizer to the flytrap soil, and we don't want that. Also, I don't want anything blocking sunlight to the flytrap plants. Plucking more of the freeloading grass out. The roots are growing really deep. 
It's only April, but these plants are already looking great and are already sending up flowering stems. These are growing well too. Notice all the fresh new traps forming. These are young B-52s I bought online last summer. The moss in this pot is competing with the flytraps for space and sunlight. A pretty cool look right now though. I trim all the dead old pictures off so the new growth can pop through. I love how cats just do what they want. I pick more freeloaders out of the seedling tray. Unfortunately, a squirrel has been digging in my seedling trays and has dug a lot of the young plants up and made a mess. <laughs> Meanwhile, while I'm mad at the squirrels for digging up these pots, Baxter comes over and lays all the way across them. This is why God made plants produce so many seeds, I guess. Most of these should be fine. A few will die. I clean off some of these seedlings and repot them. This is peat and distilled water. And I use plastic pots because they are inert and not going to leach any unwanted minerals into the soil, like a ceramic pot would, a clay pot, or a cement pot. It's the last week of April now. This is why I've kept the plants covered until now. Not for the heat, but just to keep all the debris out. Now I can take the cover off so the plants can get natural rain and full sunlight. Summer is coming fast. I pull a lot of this heavy moss out so it doesn't cover the fly traps, and I put it on some of my bonsai. It's the first of May now, and the pitcher plants are springing to life and sending up more of their amazing and odd looking flowers. Flytrap seedlings are growing fast in this warm weather. And in anticipation of having more flytrap seeds this summer, I'm going to go ahead and make up another bin and have it ready. This bagged peat is so dry it takes days for it to soak up the water and moisture that's needed for fly traps. And a day later it's still not soaked up that water. The water is still mostly underneath it, floating around like a waterbed or a big batch of brownies that's about to go in the oven. Let's 
see it's still extremely dry underneath. You have to go dig all the way down to get to the water. By the second week of May, the flytraps are sending up flowering stalks everywhere. And the pitcher plant flowers are looking amazing. There's constant competition in nature. With plenty of water, plant cover, and bugs, the frogs start moving in to steal the flytraps' food. This trap beat the frog though. Dinner. By May 16th, the flytrap flowers are blooming and open for business. Hey, I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Another freeloader, and an Anoli stops in for some of the flytrap food. The traps do seem to be catching their share of food though. And the koi are starving as always. They are loving this warm weather. Notice how the water has changed too. The biological filters love the heat too, and are now doing their job of keeping the water clear. Now we're into early June. The traps are looking big and full, and they're catching plenty of food. Since I have so many traps, sometimes I'll put leftover cat food from the house out by the traps to be sure they have plenty of opportunities. <laughs> yeah, I know it's kind of gross, but it's effective. I've had this pot for three years now. Notice how full and thick it is. The fly traps are spreading around the whole pot. More frogs move in, looking and lurking to steal food from the fly traps. These are the seedlings again, now in mid-June, so they're almost a year old now. This is a King Henry I bought online over two years ago. It struggled for two years, but it's finally growing this summer. Yay, finally! This anole just finished a meal up in the tree above the fly traps. That's the thing about nature, there's always competition. Anoles, frogs, birds, spiders will build their nests right above the fly traps, all looking for insects to eat. Depeche Mode were right, the grabbing hands do grab all they can. The fly trap flowers are still producing lots of pollen into June and producing seed pods for the next generation. And the flowers that were fertilized earlier in May have now turned to seed pods. I flick these off into a small white bowl so I can see how many are there. Then spritz the tub I set up earlier. And spread the seeds around on the surface. No need to cover them. I just keep them spritzed and moist. Baxter's passed out in the brush while I work. Dragonflies use the flower stems as landing pads. They never get caught in the traps, and they eat a lot of mosquitoes. A single dragonfly can eat hundreds of mosquitoes per day, so obviously I like having them around. They are entertaining to watch, too. I keep adding water to the tubs in the summer heat. The dragonflies are curious about this and fly around checking it all out. They zip around everywhere and lay eggs in the water pools.
Now we're into the first week of July. The seeds I planted just a few weeks ago are starting to grow. Uh, let's get this trespasser out of here. These three plants were tiny last year. They've really taken off this summer. And these are the seedlings from last year again, now a year old. This is what they looked like back in February and what they look like a few months later in July. Some serious growth. And here are some of the older plants now in mid-July. Large, full, healthy fly traps. The new seedlings are growing fast too. So hopefully you're seeing similar seasonal looks and good growth with your Venus flytraps too, or even better. If you're not, then go back and check the basics. They should be catching an insect or two a month. They should be in plastic or glazed pots so no extra nutrients or minerals are leaching into the soil. They should be getting only distilled water, rainwater, or reverse osmosis water. They should be planted in low nutrient soil with no fertilizer additives like pure peat or sphangum moss. I've experimented with planting Venus flytraps in pure silica sand, but I just don't see any gain or benefit from it. As the weather starts getting cool again, the flytraps will go back into dormancy and start the whole cycle over. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy the channel.